Hello, chemistry students. Today, we will be performing our isolation of chlorophyll and carotenoid pigments from spinach experiment. In this experiment, we will extract the chlorophyll and carotenoid pigments from spinach using acetone. We will then use column chromatography to separate the pigments, and we will analyze the fractions collected off our column using thin layer chromatography. Let's get started. To begin, we first need to weigh out approximately 0.5 grams of fresh spinach leaves. Make sure that you're using the leaves and avoid using the stems. The mass of fresh spinach leaves that we will be using is 0.5087 grams. I've torn the spinach leaves into small pieces and we will next place them in a mortar with one milliliter of ice cold acetone. We will then grind the spinach leaves with a pestle until they are broken down. You may need to add additional acetone if your acetone evaporates. We will then use a pasture pipette to transfer the mixture to a screw cap centrifuge tube. We will then rinse the mortar and pestle with an additional one milliliter of acetone and transfer to the centrifuge tube. We will then centrifuge the mixture. This is what our mixture looks like after centrifugation. After centrifuging, we will transfer the liquid to a new centrifuge tube. We will then add two milliliters of hexane and cap the tube in shape. We will then add two milliliters of deionized water and cap the tube and shake with venting. We will then centrifuge the mixture to break any emulsion. This is what our mixture looks like after centrifugation. We will next remove and discard the lower aqueous layer. We will next dry the hexane layer with the pigments using a column that's been packed with 0.5 grams of anhydrous sodium sulfate. We will collect the dried solution in a test tube labeled E for extract. After all of the hexane layer has drained from the column, we will add an additional 0.5 milliliters of hexane to the column to extract all of the pigments from the drying agent. We will next evaporate the solvent by placing the test tube in a warm water bath and using a stream of air to aid evaporation. After evaporating the solvent, we will next dissolve the residue using 0.5 milliliters of hexane. We will then stopper the test tube. Before we can run our column, we need to assemble these items. We need five test tubes numbered one through five. We need 10 milliliters of hexane, six milliliters of 70% hexane, 30% acetone, six milliliters of acetone, 
and six milliliters of 80% acetone, 20% methanol. Our solvents increase in polarity from hexane being the least polar to the 80% acetone, 20% methanol being the most polar. We will now separate the pigments on a column packed with alumina. We will first add three milliliters of hexane to the column. Once added, the column must not be allowed to run dry. When the level of the hexane reaches the top of the alumina, we will add half of the extracted pigments to the column. We will leave the remainder of the pigments in the test tube for the thin layer chromatography procedure. We will continue to collect the eluent in test tube number one. Just as the pigment solution penetrates the column, we will add one milliliter of hexane and drain until the surface of the liquid has reached the alumina. We will then add four more milliliters of hexane. If the yellow band consisting of the carotenes does not separate from the green band, we will need to change to the next more polar solvent. When changing solvents, do not add the new solvent until the last solvent has nearly penetrated the alumina. Once the appropriate solvent is found, we will continue to add this solvent until the yellow band passes through the column. Just before the yellow band reaches the bottom of the column, we will place test tube number two under the column. When the eluent becomes colorless again, we will place test tube number three under the column. Once the level of solvent is almost at the top of the alumina, we will add several milliliters of the next more polar solvent. Once the appropriate polarity solvent is found to move the green band down the column, we will continue to add this solvent until the green band is eluted from the column. We will collect the green band in test tube number four. When there is little to no green color in the eluent, we will place test tube number five under the column and stop the procedure. We next need to evaporate the solvent from fractions number two and number four and the original extract by placing the test tubes in a warm water bath and using a stream of air to aid evaporation. After the solvent has evaporated, we will remove the test tubes from the heat and stopper them. We will next add two drops of 70% hexane, 30% acetone to each of the test tubes containing our dried pigments. We will then swirl the test tube so that the solvent dissolves as much of the pigment as possible. We will then spot each of our samples on a thin layer chromatography or TLC plate.
We will next develop the TLC plate in a development chamber that contains 70% hexane, 30% acetone as the solvent. We will remove the TLC plate once the solvent front is one to two centimeters from the top of the TLC plate. Immediately upon removal, we will need to mark the solvent front in order to calculate RF values. Okay, students, you should now identify as many of the spots in our samples as possible. Determine which pigments were present in the yellow band and which pigments were present in the green band. And don't forget to calculate the RF values for each spot. This concludes the isolation of chlorophyll and carotenoid pigments from spinach experiment. Thank you for joining me for this laboratory.